Hello and welcome to Psych Boost. This is the third video in the Factors Affecting Attraction series. In this video we'll be looking at filter theory. We'll also be defining social demography and we'll have a bunch of key terms such as attitudes, complementarity, field of availables and field of desirables as well as some other key terms. And as always, I'll give you some other ways to extend your evaluation if you had to write about filter theory in an essay. Filter theory is a term by Kirchhoff and Davies back in 1962, so quite a while ago. They suggested that we can't just choose to start a relationship with anybody we want to. We only really get the opportunity to become attracted to those people who have passed through a series of filters. Kirchhoff and Davies suggest two terms, the field of availables, the entire field of people available to us to start a relationship with, and then a smaller group, the field of desirables, the group of people we'd actually like to start a relationship with. So let's talk about similarity filter number one. Similarity filter number one is social demography. We're more likely to come in contact with some people rather than others. And it's just due to how we spend our time and our geography. So these factors are, who do you live near? Who are you with when you go to college, when you go to university, when you go to work? And who do you socialize with? And where do you socialize? Now, these educational, work and social choices are going to be linked to certain characteristics like your social class, perhaps your level of education and how much money you've got in the bank. So while we feel there's a chance of meeting anyone, in fact we only meet a certain subset of people during our day-to-day -day interactions and these are going to be the people that we would start a relationship with. So once we've passed through the social demography filter, we then reach a second filter. This similarity filter is attitudes. Due to the first filter of social demography, it actually is quite likely that we will have similar attitudes with the people we come into contact with. We do tend to meet people of the same class, of the same culture, and maybe with similar levels of education. If we do share these core values, then these people are seen as more attractive and maybe more compatible with us. We spoke in an early video about self-disclosure. If we share attitudes, it's much easier to self-disclose your opinions and not feel you're going to be judged on them. Once someone's passed through the filter of attitudes, then we come on to the third filter. This third filter is complementarity. We need to be matched with those people who are going to provide for our emotional needs. Now these could be similarities. We might be quite passionate, and we might want a partner who's quite passionate as well. But complementarity can also work by looking for differences. Differences that are mutually beneficial. So for example, one partner might really enjoy organizing social activities while the other partner doesn't enjoy the organisation but really enjoys being a part of them. If both of them wanted to organise the social activities, maybe it would lead to conflict. So you have two people fitting quite nicely into two roles within a relationship. It's thought that the attitude similarity is useful at the beginning of a relationship because of the self-disclosure, but it's seen that the complementarity filter is more important for the success of a long-term relationship. Some key evaluative research. Kirchhoff and Davies did some research to back this up. They used a longitudinal study design over seven months. They used questionnaires to try and find the views of student couples. These student couples would have together for more or less than 18 months. If they'd been together less than 18 months, they were just a short-term relationship. If they were for more than 18 months, they were just a long-term relationship. What Kirchhoff and Davies found was that similarity of attitudes was the most important factor in the success of the short-term relationships whereas complementarity was the most important factor for the success of the long-term relationships. And this supports the filter theory idea that both attitudes and complementarity are important for attraction and romantic partners. One issue with this study, of course, is this study used student couples, also American student couples. So we might want to say this study might not be generalizable to populations outside of young, educated Americans. It might have some culture bias. There's more support from the real world in Taylor's 2010 finding that of all the Americans who married in 1998, 85% of those people married from within their own ethnic group. So this would be a suggestion that filter theory does really work in the real world and we are filtered by ethnicity to have more contact with people from our own ethnic group. Some of the ways we can build our evaluation is we could criticize this explanation 
by saying that the similarity in partners might not actually be a result of selection. It might be that when people are together for a long time, there's a convergence of beliefs and values through conversation. Also, this complementarity factor might not be selected for and might not exist before the relationship, but during the relationship, each partner finds their role. So we could be looking here at an issue of correlation, not of causation. I'm also going to give two suggestions about how this research might lack temporal validity. We could argue that today these filters are really starting to break down. We're quite comfortable developing virtual relationships and it lacks the gating factors that these filters provide. So social demography doesn't really work with apps like Tinder. You might be able to select for geography, but you can't filter for social class, for education or ethnicity. This could mean instead of a focus on the filters, there's more of a focus on physical attraction. We could also say that it could lack temporal validity. Relationship formation across ethnicities was not as acceptable as it is now. Now with increased globalization and integration, we might argue traditional filters don't really apply. One advantage of filter theory could be that by including the benefits of the other partner, so the other partner providing emotional needs, and also complementing our own personal failings, with their own advantages. This links to ideas of social exchange theories and gives more than just a basic physical explanation of attraction. So I hope you enjoyed the Psychboots video. Please, if you haven't already, click subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. If you have any questions at all, pop them in the comment box and I'll try and get back to you. If you'd like the free resources that come with this course, I put the posters and some other things into this Dropbox link. Until the next video.